Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Revolo Podcast. Uh, today, we're interviewing Pat Militic. Pat is the UFC's first welterweight champion and is now in the UFC's Hall of Fame. You've probably seen him on his show, uh, The Conspiracy Farm, or podcasts like The Joe Rogan Experience. We really appreciate Pat coming on. And without further ado, here is Pat Militic. When you got, where you got that? We're based in Nashville. Yeah, we're out in Nashville, in uh, South Nashville right now. How about you, sir? Uh, I'm in Bettendorf, Iowa, my hometown. Yes, sir. You seem like a uh, very uh, off the grid individual, not, uh, you know, very down to earth and keeping things on, on the farm and good, good food and coming in organic. You know, I do my best. I mean, everybody's, everybody has a tendency to slip up now and then and not eat perfect, right? That's just the way it is. But uh, for me, I just have to, you know, stay away from bread and pasta and stuff most of the time. And, uh, you know, try, I try to eat healthy. I try to eat, eat as healthy as I can. Uh, and that's, you know, I guess why my body doesn't hurt after being in the equivalent of 10,000 car wrecks, you know? Yeah, and speaking of uh, eating healthy, you are a person who's really led the charge, in my opinion, on uh, the organic organic metals and like non-organic metals. I've never really heard that concept before, before um, kind of following you on social media and seeing some of the stuff that you've been posting and on your website and whatnot. Can you kind of break that down, uh, what the difference is and how it affects the body? Yeah, you know, and it it never dawned on me that a lot of people, you know, in the medical fields and, um, you know, chemists and all of that didn't know that that existed either, right? Uh, until, like, having a chemist laugh at me at a digital currency meeting and him going, there's no such thing as organic metal. And literally laughing in my face in front of all these people. And uh, so I said, <laughs> I'd have to educate a chemist how how metals become organic and he goes yeah give it your best shot right and so i explained it to him so i'll explain it to you guys when metals are pulled up out of the ground chelated up out of the ground by a plant and become bonded, they become bonded with carbon molecule and makes them very stable and then they can be burned by the mitochondria which is the furnace of your cell to generate energy inside your cell. It creates cellular energy. And so uh, organics, anything that's bonded with carbon in that way then becomes useful for your cells, for health, for you know, proper cellular mitochondrial function. And literally the, the problem we're seeing is our environment, if, if, I think people are starting to wake up and understand that their health issues are directly related to the dysfunction of their cells and mitochondria because of all the literal pollutants, and heavy metals in our environment. That's in our water, it's in our food, it's, it's in our soil, everywhere. People are having it sprayed on their lawns, golf courses, you know. Of course, the cleaning agents in their house, you know, like manufacturing, solvents, all kinds of stuff like that. There's just, there's, way too many chemicals and they're very bad for our health and so people just need to understand that they need to put good high-end antioxidants in their cells or in their bodies so that they can clean out their cells things with that have that ability to do that yeah how, how do you how do you what do you recommend to people who like like nowadays it's it seems like it's almost impossible it's like everything is covered in chemicals you can't you know it's, it's basically it's illegal to have raw milk it's like there's so many things that are being um that are just infected with all this stuff do you have any advice or recommendation to people who are 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 aware of that because it, it seems like impossible these days well the best products that i have found personally are at uh, chemicalfreebody.com uh tim james is the founder of that company so people can go there if they want to use, they'll go get a discount if they wanted to use my promo code, which is PAT1776. And I figured that was fairly easy to remember. But, yeah, great, yeah. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's, yeah, no, he's a very knowledgeable guy. Uh, Dr. Treadway, formulator, Dr. Treadway is a 
Yeah, I don't know. Really admirable guy. One of the leaders in the world on formulating the best products like that. So that's the thing is a lot of people just don't understand. We've been, ever since I was a kid, you know, my mom was a nursing director. She was, uh, she ran a nursing school. I was a big believer in, you know, vaccines. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing research about 20, uh, over 20 years ago on vaccines and efficacy and safety. And you don't have to be a doctor to understand numbers to be able to read and comprehend things. Somehow we've been told that if we don't have a, a doctor, a doctorate in something that we don't, <laughs> we don't have enough sense to take care of our own health. That's right. maddening to me that people actually fall for that. But anyway, uh, so that's, that's really, that's the, that's the best stuff that I've been able to find. And uh, so, okay, great. That in my mind, that in my mind gives you the best chance um, at improving your health, and certainly for athletic performance as well. Uh, I've worked with a lot of a lot of professional athletes, a lot of uh, high school and college athletes, and that's where I send them. And, you know, it, I was I think it's been about a month ago. Uh, the owner Tim James uh, of Chemical Free said, "Hey, I've got this uh, pro baseball player." On the, on the Zoom call, will you jump on the Zoom real quick? He wants to talk to you and ask you some questions. And I said, sure. So I got on there, and he told me that he was on a product that I partnered with, with Chemical Free Body, with Tim, uh, called Super Soldier. And he said that his his strength and conditioning workouts were a breeze. They're literally, in two weeks' time of being on the product, he was just blowing through his workouts. And it's just simply because his cells are working correctly. <laughs> and he's crazy. got mitochondrial, you know, mitochondrial energy. So we definitely want to get to who and what is behind why America is so unhappy and, un and, and unhealthy. But um, before we pass over the, the metals topic, is there, a, other than the supplements you just described, is there a great way to detox the body full of, I mean, I know sauna is supposed to be super helpful and just sweating all of it out, but are there other ways as well to just getting all the, before we just like talk about what the good stuff is to put in, just get all the bad stuff out? Work, I mean, working out, you, so imagine if you, best way to look at it, I guess, is, you know, our system is designed with um, our glandular system and everything else. It's gotta be, it's gotta be pumped. It's got to be run. So the more sedentary you are, the less you're cleaning out your system and your filtering system in your body, right? Mm. So if you work out, mm. uh, go for walks, whatever you got to do. You know, there's a lot of people out there that can barely walk. Uh, get on a bike, do a stationary bike, whatever you have to do to start getting your health back and start, you know, pumping the fluids through your body so that you flush that stuff out every day. There's a reason you feel better after a workout. And that, that's, a, that's a huge problem. And specifically America today is just, you're, you're right. So many people can't even walk these days. <laughs> like, it, that's just like encouraged, it seems. Just crazy. Yeah, well, so the guy that trained me in uh, functional fitness, Dr. Ed Thomas, and he worked with me in the 90s. He was already saying that, you know, we're in a national security crisis right now because of obesity in America. And he couldn't have been more spot on because we got to this, this particular uh, time in history, you know, three years ago. And they come on the news and tell everybody that they're going to, you know, they're, we're, in, we're in big trouble, man. We're in big trouble. You've got to lock yourself in your house, and close your business, and, you know, the... Uh, Death is coming for you, right? And scared the hell out of everybody. But had everybody been eating correctly and in shape and had a decent immune system, everybody would have went, you're high. We're not going to do anything. <laughs> we're going to keep our business open. No, no we're not going to listen to you. But instead, the entire country locked itself down. And they. it's very sad because, you know, 
I've been exposed to a lot of people, a lot of very smart people, uh, because I did my podcast for so many years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, former intelligence officials, research scientists, uh, you know, special forces guys, doctors, you know, you know just a, a pretty wide variety of experts at different areas. And so when I look at the world and when you guys look at the world, because you, you've obviously opened up your mind to everything that's going on in the world for the most part, you see it differently than a lot of people. And you're probably not on any, any, uh, any drugs, you've not been put on any drugs that have the potential of just literally disconnecting people from how it sounds, mm -hmm. so critical factor, right? And so that was the thing when our, when our governor here in Iowa uh, put out the mandate, I said, I'm going to go to the grocery store just, just to see how many people are buying this because it was like the day before I saw the picture of the bat on its back in a bowl of soup. And I, I literally started laughing. I go, I go, oh man, if people are literally going to fall for this, I, I don't know what to say. But I went to the grocery store and I was the only person not wearing a, maybe one other person wasn't wearing a mask. And for, I don't even know how many months I was getting streamed at by people everywhere I went. Yeah. And was this in Iowa? It was, well, you got to remember, I was traveling for broadcast a lot as well mm -hmm. uh, when they started back up. Like I did a, I did a broadcast for NBC Sports, and they had called me up and said, "Hey, we're doing a show in in Atlanta. Um, love to have you." And I said, "Well, I said I've seen your commentators wearing masks on camera. I said I'm not wearing a mask. Not only am I not wearing a mask on camera, I'm not wearing a mask day anywhere I go." <laughs> mm. <laughs> so they go, "Okay, hold on, we're gonna check." And they called me back and said, okay, we got the green light. So I <laughs> yeah, go to Atlanta. And I'm staying, you know, at a hotel that's literally right down the street from the CNN building that got destroyed down there. Mm. And uh, Atlanta, downtown Atlanta, was kind of, a, kind of a ghost town, to be honest with you. Yeah. So um, we're at the weigh-ins the day before, and we're at the venue. And one of the security guys from the venue starts getting on me about not wearing a mask. And I just said, dude, I'm not, I'm not wearing a mask. It's not going to happen. And so he started getting to the point where he was thinking he was going to have to try to figure out how he was going to take me out. But he knew he was surrounded by a bunch of guys with cauliflower ears. He yeah. Was, he was, he was, it's he terrible was digging them up. And uh, so anyway, uh, the producer from NBC Sports came up and goes, he he doesn't he doesn't have to wear a mask contractually and he's not going to so it just let's stop so you know but it was just it was ridiculous man as the people fell for it you know out of fear what do you expect them to do right they think they're going to die or they you know virtue signaling with their wife next to them and want to be a hero hmm. and scream at me in front of their wife in the grocery store or the gas station or wherever it would take place and I just you know there was one guy that was morbidly obese and he screamed at me to put on it and, uh, shook his head like this and he's got a big old beard and a, a mask over the top of his beard <laughs> i goes when he shook his head like this i goes there's some, something wrong with your neck and he goes you're not wearing a mask I'm like well, i don't i don't need a mask i i don't need one he goes it's not for you it's for everybody else and that's what i said to everybody else interesting I go, let's start with you. You've been eating donuts every day. You've been eating donuts every every day of your life. And now all of a sudden, I have to wear a mask to save your fat ass? That's not how this works, dude. That's not how this works. And so, you know, those are the kind of conversations. I just wouldn't, I literally would not stand for it. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of those people hopefully are waking up and going, wow, we were, we, we were, we were just a tad wrong. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, 100%. And we definitely want to get into like what kind of forces are operating to push these kind of things. And definitely starting with on the, the food side of things. Um, you know, obviously there's Big Ag, there's Monsanto kind of controlling the food supply and a lot of the, you know, the regula regulatory capture that they've done. 
in getting certain policies. Um, but, you know, why do you think that, I've heard you say this before, that grocery stores are stores of poison almost. And in a lot, of, I mean, most of the food there, it's kind of true. Um, and so what do you think are the, the upstream forces that are causing all these downstream effects? Well, I mean, you got to look at Bayer, Pfizer, you know, other companies like that. They're German owned. They, they've been around since before World War II. Yeah. Uh, what do you think those chemical companies were doing to German citizens in the 30s, the White Republic in the 30s? You no know, idea. that's why was there a why was there a transgender um, explosion in gay population? And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those people. We have to love everyone no matter what. But we have to explain to people why their testosterone is destroyed. We have to explain to them why they're ill, all these different things. It's proven fact um, that atrazine, which is a, uh, you know, a herbicide that's in our water here in Iowa. I mean, the Iowa American Water Company put out its, its chemical um, list, and atrazine was on there. That's not the amounts that are supposed to be in there, I'll tell you that. But that's proven to not only destroy testosterone, but in lab rats, male lab rats and frogs, they actually grew female genitalia. And so I just say, look, I, I can only just give you the information, advise you maybe what could help you to develop, because... I would think everybody out there would want their children to develop, to develop correctly, right? Mm -hmm. Proper hormonal levels, proper health, cellular health, all that stuff. Um, but there are, look, man, there were sex clinics in the Weimar Republic in Nazi Germany, mm -hmm. right? They pop back up in our country. We have them, I mean, they're all over the place. And luckily some states are banning them because these people... For whatever reason, the insanity that has taken over, uh, these medical professionals think that they're doing something magical for these kids and, and put, putting them on more hormone-suppressing drugs, and then eventually they go under a knife and get carved up and mutilated? Are you kidding me? Right? So that's, you know, there's there's some history there, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. there's, there's definitely some history there. So, um, and with the with the psychological operations that go with it. You know, you think, go back to the 30s in Germany, and people were getting sick. There was disease. There was financial issues, right? They were putting pressure on the German citizens. And they were, well, martyring Hitler in the early 30s, right? Throw him in jail, all that good shit. Um, and just put put the full court press on the German citizens and then said, well, it's, you know, the Jewish citizens and now these transgenders and these gays and all this stuff. And we need to, they, they, they're what's causing all the problems in society. And those people innocently did not know what was going on. Right. Mm. There were some people that knew to get out, but just the same as today, <clears throat> Again, that's why I say we have to love people. We have to show compassion for them because they don't understand why they're the way they are. And then the psychological operation proves that this is deliberate. Mm -hmm. It proves the criminality of all of this. And then so it's a full core press on, on the people today and our children, for God's sakes. And uh, they're doing the same thing. Right? Mm hmm yeah, there's definitely like <clears throat> so many aspects to that too. It's, it's, it's. You can say it's the chemicals in the water. It's the food we're eating. Um, but then it's also like all this. Like I think the rise of social media and a lot of social pressure and this just this all this stuff being passed on through generations. Whether it's chemicals and this just this various social things, social media. Um, <clears throat> it's all just encouraging it's all like encouraging the same thing. So it's, it's, it's hard to fight all of that at the same time. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, no, it, it, it is. It is. And it started. It's, it's the interesting thing is I remember, um, Archie Bunker and, uh, the Jeffersons. You remember the, you guys have, have ever seen reruns of the Jeffersons? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, like all that stuff back then, man. They were they were going all in against. You know, that's when they kind of introduced kind of the different lifestyles, so to speak, right? Mm. And Archie Butler was like, "No, nah, man, no, nah, nah, that's not." <laughs> and there was a reason they said there was a there was a saying way i mean long before you guys were born um they associated communists fascists with um transgenderism and all of that type of lifestyle right and the reason they were doing that is probably because they knew that there was something going on with you know maybe in medicine maybe in the chemical corporation whatever that something was being caused you know, this, these, these mm. people will be employed. And, and, um, why some people, um, don't have the same issues as others, you know, that's where I think certain, certain people are, are better at chelating toxins out of their body. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so, um, but when they ask you like, is your mom on your mom's side or your dad's side, any history of cancer or heart problems, right? Well, there's a lot of stuff that we're being told that's genetic, where if you really look at things, if you look at a plant and you see it's dying, you go, oh, shit, I forgot to water it, right? Or God, I haven't gotten sun in a week. I put it, you know, whatever. It's always the environment when a plant gets sick. Yeah. Why, why would human beings think they are any different? Yeah, I have a question for you about that, too. So Carter's outlined a lot of different... Uh, various forces, some being social and some being actual, you know, food and water and whatnot. What do you make of, um, like, chemtrails? Do you think that's a problem as well? Obviously, we know, like, stratospheric aerosolic injections are going on. To what extent is exactly, I think it's barium oxide is, like, pretty, is it a toxin in, in there's your silver, body? There's, I believe, silver oxide, there's barium, there's aluminum particulates, um, there's... I mean, I was talking with a guy that's actually kind of an expert in that field, and he goes, dude, the list is like... And just the stuff that I've researched uh, on what it does to soil, what it does to crops, what it does to plants, animals, what it does to humans. And a friend of mine wrote a bill and sponsored a bill in the state of Illinois to ban weather modification programs in the state mm -hmm. of Illinois. And the Democrats looked at him and they said, we're not even going to bring that up for a debate because that's pseudoscience. Really? So not only, not only do they not care or to look into it or for whatever reason, probably because they know they, you know, end up not getting reelected, but right. that people have to understand and come to the, come to the, you know, the hard point of, but they're spraying everyone. They're not spraying people on the left. They're not spraying people on the right. Right. They're they're spraying all of us, and they're spraying my children, right. which doesn't make me happy. Um, you know. And so, if people doubt any of this, just Google weather modification companies, research them as much as you want. Then, and it takes so little effort, cerebral effort, to do this. That's what pisses me off. Yeah. And then. Yeah research weather modification legislation mm -hmm. and then look at what it is they're actually spraying in the aerosols and then research what that does to soil, what that does to human uh, respiratory systems, for instance. But it is not good for our health. It's absolutely not good for our health. It's detrimental. And so it's very deliberate as well. You know, they say they're, they say they're doing that to block the sun to cool the planet. And it, well, if you block the sun, we can't make vitamin D for our immune system, right? Vitamin D3. Um, our crops are certainly not going to be as, as healthy, mm -hmm. um, you know, and all of that. So talking with experts where they, they say, dude, they're using more, they're using more pesticides and herbicides in the forests of America than they are agriculturally. Right now. Wow. That's a crazy stat. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the, the, the government dropped, what was it? I can't remember how many million of, of, uh, oral rabies 
baits in forests in 13 states on the East Coast. Wow. Were, and of course, they were mRNA technology, so they're altering the genetic makeup of animals and bees and mosquitoes, right? Yeah, and it's not even just like, it's not even, sometimes it's not even purposeful as much as it is like, th there's just so many chemicals being transported and, and just being shipped around. Like, I, I don't know if you followed like the East Palestine, Ohio situation where that train crashed um, and all those yeah. chemicals spilled out. Uh, so I actually went, I went out. Did you yeah, go I went there? out there for a couple of days. I was out there for a couple of days when Steve Bannon was doing his show from the roadside, that roadside grill and bar or whatever. Uh, yeah, I was. I went there. I went there too. Not not to the Steve Bannon thing, but I was uh, in East Palestine, like covering the story uh, for a okay. while. And it's and it and the funny thing is that they're just they just lie about that stuff too. Like as soon as it happened, they were like, no, 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 the air is safe, the water's safe, the soil's safe, everything's safe. And then like we go there and you you, you throw a stone in the water and all these like chemical bubbles start popping out of the water. And and then an article came out not that long ago where they're like, ah, oh, the soil's probably infected. And there's, and, and, and so it's just like all this, they, they just don't, I don't know what it is. Do they not care? Do they, are they just trying to cover their own asses? Like, what is it? It's very strange. Well, I think that, um, humans can be manipulated with money to do horrible things to other humans or just blindly just do their job. Um, which again, you know, Nuremberg, the uh, Nuremberg trials where they were like, that was the big thing. I was just, take, I was following my orders, right? Things right. like that. Mm -hmm. But the upper, the very upper echelon of the people that, that the bloodlines that have always run this planet have been doing this to us over and over throughout history. Like mm -hmm. genociding, getting us to genocide each other, getting us to go to war with each other. You know, this, it's, it's, it's so obvious that it's become comical that people don't see it. You know, what it, what is... Like a, it's like a tragic comedy to me. Mm. What did you see in East Palestine? Tell me about that. I'm curious. And did you get um, sick talk... as well? Oh, yeah. Did you get I, sick? I did not get sick. Um, I was, was pounding a lot of, um, a lot of uh, antioxidants and uh, making sure that I was, I was not going to get sick. But um, I talked to a lot of people who definitely are suffering. You know, and it's, Yeah, I, I got it's sick ridiculous. when I was there, too. Did you? Yeah, I, I was there. I, I mean, I made a I made a fatal mistake of accidentally drinking some some water. <laughs> I think that's what did it. I drank a cup of coffee. It was like, oh, damn it! I should not have done that. And then the rest of the day, my my throat was so sore. I had a massive headache. My eyes were watering. Um, it just just it was horrible. And my colleague who was there with me at the time, um, her her throat was sore. Her eyes were watering. She had a headache. It was. <clears throat> It, it was crazy. And then I had another colleague who came, followed up after we left, and he said he was out there for a couple hours and just started uncontrollably vomiting because he was, like, so close to the wreck site. Like, the chemicals are just in the air, and it smelled bad. It smelled like paint and, like, these weird chemicals. It was, it was horrible there. I just saw a guy do a video from uh, Toronto, Canada, and that plume reached all the way up into Canada. Yep. And the, the emergency rooms were getting packed with people breaking out with rashes and all kinds of stuff, um, you know, from from what they believe was that that plume. Yeah. So, you know, when they lit it on fire, they had to know that it was going to convert to phosgene. And that's the thing that enrages me. I, I would love to be able to speak with the person, you know, whether I think it was the police chief who he, he got the OK from somebody or something. Uh, from the EPA or whoever the hell it was who literally gave that order to ignite that that shit mm -hmm. and convert it to a World War One uh, chemical weapon yeah. and just let it go all over the eastern eastern seaboard uh, and now that it has settled on the ground and then it gets rained on then it converts to uh, hydrochloric acid right and now it's in the drinking water and, and you were you know, probably affected by the hydrochloric acid or something. Mm -hmm. right? Definitely, yeah. And it was all like a, it, it's definitely all, the weird thing that, we, that I found out while we were there actually is, is the, the, the company that they, uh, the, the people that were testing the water and testing the air and saying, it's safe, it's all good. They were actually hired by the train company, which I believe is owned by BlackRock. 
they they were the ones that hired the people to test the air. So there seems like a conflict of interest there, obviously. <laughs> and then the even crazier thing after that is is within 24 hours of the train wrecking and them blowing it up and spreading these chemicals everywhere, within 24 hours they had relayed new track and trains were coming through again. So it's it's definitely a, a, a money thing. Like they they wanted to keep the keep the uh, the product coming through. Uh, they didn't want to sacrifice any time or money. Well, you wonder, I know that um, one official admitted that they used the wrong testing equipment for the air, right? <laughs> so, That's crazy. I mean, it, it's, it's an absolute clown show. And, uh, you know, so it's just, I, like I say, I think there's a lot of really, really dumb people in powerful positions right now as well uh, who will make horrible decisions no matter what. Mm. You know, they're always, and that's the thing is that years ago, I started wondering, like, why are they making up these laws that make absolutely zero sense? And why do they talk like this? And why does, I can't remember what his name is. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the video. Maybe you can remember the name. A politician, he's a U.S. congressman, I believe. And uh, he was saying, you know, I'm a little worried with us adding more troops to the island of Guam because I'm a little worried that it's going to capsize with we put too many people on there. <laughs> the island? <laughs> Hank. His first name's Hank. His first name's Hank. Oh, I think I he's from it. up Georgia. Hmm. But, uh, but another congressman, actually with a straight face, no, it was a military, it was a military expert who was being questioned, a general. Who said, uh, well, uh, congressman or senator or whatever, he goes, there's really no risk of Guam capsizing. <laughs> and he <laughs> said it with a straight face. <laughs> that is crazy. The, I mean, the, same, I don't know if you watched any of like uh, the, the, the bill that they were discussing a while, uh, a few, um, few days ago, I guess, <clears throat> trying to ban TikTok um, and that whole thing. Like, there's so many people just like are not... Sh- just a lot of people in power just don't really know what they're incompetent they're incompetent it seems um on all sides too it's not like just it's crazy yeah no absolutely and uh um so they tried to get me to run for congress years ago probably it was good ten. that was good 10 years ago and i started going through the process um and having meetings and phone conversations filling out paperwork and all that sort of stuff. And at that time, uh, before all of this stuff happened, and uh, my popularity was pretty high in the state of Iowa. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I had a pretty good shot of winning had I run. But now that I look back on it, I think, you know, I started recognizing the types of, the type of people that were meeting with me that I did not want to sell my soul. Right. I just, I could see the writing on the wall and I was like, I'm out, man. I don't, I, I'm not getting, uh, yeah, I'm not getting good, warm and fuzzy feelings from these people at all. So I decided to step away from that because I'd end up, I, I do a fairly good job of keeping my cool and not losing my temper unless somebody is really doing something really, really stupid. Right. Yeah. And, uh, then I will once once I once I lose my tempo, you know I, yeah, I I wouldn't survive long around that that many idiots. I, I just wouldn't. <laughs> well, you say idiots and like I guess they're stooges for whoever's above them and maybe even all the way up to the thirteen bloodlines, like you were saying. I'd love for you to go more into that. Definitely, I'd explain kind of how that works and maybe the history there. But and secondly, like how maybe we can step out of that paradigm. And not necessarily escape the matrix, but like not let it crush you. Because it seems like now more than ever, they're making a big play through the WEF all the way down the chain to control every aspect of life through, I mean, even like, you know, you have land and a house, like um, Bill Gates is buying up all the farmland as is China. And, and, and you know, there's obviously making plays on the food supply. They, they don't want you to eat meat. They don't, they want you to eat bugs and stuff, <laughs> crazy stuff. So. So basically, right. who, who's running the world and how do we not let them run our lives? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, some people call them, you know, it's funny, you know, like Alex Jones literally has been right about this stuff for 
25 years, right? Um, and uh, what, what, when he says, they want to eat your babies, you know, when he goes crazy <laughs> like that, you know, but because, because they actually do, because they're psychopaths and they're definitely satanic. And, you know, but the, you know, the black nobility, the, the Jesuits, you know, within the Catholic church, you know, they're not even allowed in certain countries. Oh, there's wow. other, there's other individuals and sects of, of religions that even within those religions, they know they're not, they're not of that religion. Hmm. They know that they're, they're just like, I know, uh, I, I, I learned very early on that there was so much evil within the Catholic church that I just wanted nothing to do with it. Right now, while I am a believer in Jesus Christ, I'm not certainly not a Catholic, but I believe what, uh, Jesus recognized was the bloodlines and, and what these people were, hmm. you know, cause he got, he got in their faces. Right. So you think about us and our, the truth being shut down on social media. Um, Jesus had that conversation with them and said, you're not the sons of Abraham. You're the sons of Satan. If you were the sons of Abraham, because they were arguing with him, they're like, no, we're the we're sons of Abraham. He's like, no, dude, if you were the sons of Abraham, you would not want me dead for telling the truth, for speaking the truth. Hmm. You're the son, you're the, you're the offspring of Satan, period. End of story. And he's a murderer and a liar, just like you guys are. Right. Hmm. And so he was recognizing that stuff. And, and a lot of people, Christians have it all wrong. Christians have it completely wrong about turning the other cheek and all the other stuff. It's, it's when somebody wrongs you, it's just, that's not about getting revenge is what that's about in my mind. And, but Jesus hmm. was chasing people out of the temple with a bullwhip. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when Herod was coming, a guy warned Jesus and said, hey, Herod's coming, and he's going to be here tomorrow, and he wants you dead. And so you might not want to be here tomorrow when he gets here. And so he called Herod a fox, but he used the female tent. So he called Herod, he called Herod a bitch in, you know, <laughs> in, that, in that language. So Jesus was, was absolutely a hellraiser. He was absolutely a hellraiser. And that's the way people have to be. I mean, people have to start pushing back more. Unfortunately, you know, I think that for all the poor people that didn't see into the future and for their work, you know, they were forced. I mean, they have to decide between feeding their children and keeping their house and, you know, standing up for them for themselves. So, mm -hmm. I mean... You can't blame parents who went, I got to feed my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a bullet for my kids, whatever. Right. And so that's, that's some soul crushing shit. And it, it, it breaks my heart that these people uh, force their employees to do that. They should, they should never have fallen for that. But so, you know, even in colleges, NCAA athletes, you know, all that sort of stuff. I mean, this is, this is some really, really demonic shit going on. So. Yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely something to be said for justified anger and <clears throat> justified um, retaliation of, of some kind. Or it's just a, I think it just depends on you know when when you carry out that anger and how you react to that anger and um, and is what you're angry about like when you whip out the, the bull whip and you start kicking people out of the out of the temple like is it justified? Mm -hmm. Is it is it are you doing it for a good cause? Um, but, but yeah, I think, I think we can't just, I think a lot of the time there's like this message or this sentiment of, um, just, just lay down and, and do nothing. But I do, I do think sometimes you can't, I do think sometimes you have to, you definitely have to stand up for yourself and you have to, um, say, no, this is wrong. Here's what we, we do, we, sh we should do instead. Um, you said you, you, you obviously believe in the, the Jesus Christ story, but you're not Catholic. Do you, out of curiosity, do you subscribe to any religion? Or any denomination, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, that's the thing is, for me, I believe in Jesus Christ. That's, that's what I believe in. I believe, I believe in what he stood for. Um, you know, the thing that was a really, really good book called Case for Christ. Yeah, and I've read it. Lee Strobel. I, it's, yeah, so, I mean, you think about his background and going into it, and he's a very educated guy as well, and an attorney and writer and all of that, but where he went out to, to 
prove his wife completely wrong about Jesus and then gets to the end of the investigation and goes, shit, <laughs> right? It's mm-hmm. pretty, pretty about book. It's pretty about book. But, um, so, but I mean, overall, I think that they have done a really good job of using religions to get us to massacre each other, right? Mm. They've definitely done that. And it, I just, I just choose to try and see through it all. And you think about, you know, I fought my entire life. I fought for a reason. I didn't like hurting other people, um, but got, got really good at it for quite a while in my life. Yeah. And uh, when you, I guess when you live that, I didn't, I didn't even see any of that as violence because violence has to be perpetrated on somebody who's unwilling. Right. right. Yeah. That's the way I, the way I look at it, but the intensity level that you have to train at and the mental process that you, you have to turn a switch on in your brain that says you do not care for the, for that time being in any way, you can't care for the well being of the person you're fighting. Like you're willing to do horrible things to them, uh, to, to get a paycheck, right. Or whatever it is, your goal, win a world title. So, and then you take it way above that level. And you think about, you know, infantry, combat veterans, special forces guys, guys who are experts at doing massive amounts of damage and the restraint that they've shown through all of this. Mm-hmm. Oh, you think about that. Think about that when you are watching this covert operation going after our children and just blatant, you know, school boards that, that literally just don't, they, they either don't see what they're doing or they're just flat out evil, uh, or they're just dumb. But in any case of any of those, they don't, they, they should be nowhere around the decisions of policies for children. Mm-hmm. Nowhere near them. Right. Like they should be as far away from children as possible. And, um, so it's, yeah, it's troubling. It's troubling, you know? So the, the, the amount of restraint that a lot of men have shown through all of this, you know, I don't, I don't know if that continues. Um, I know that if, you know, I have to defend myself, I'm going to do it. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to go back to being that guy. Mm -hmm. I don't, I really don't want to. I put him away a long time ago and I spend my time trying to, I spend my time trying to help people with their health. You know, that's what I care about. When somebody calls me up and goes, Hey man, I just want to thank you. I'm, I'm like, my life has totally changed. My outlook has totally changed. Right. Yeah. You know, because they figured out that what they need to eat, what supplements to take, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I yearn for. I, I do not want to hurt people. Yeah, well, you know, even in the Bible, it says the meek shall inherit the earth, but that's a rough translation. But the actual phrase is, those who have swords but keep them sheathed will inherit the earth, which is, you know, a similar concept in fighting, which is like, be a warrior, but keep it under control, you know. Um, and so that's, you know, there are times to be a warrior is also what that implies. So if that side needs to be let out, it needs to be let out. But um, the uncontrolled, you know, aggression is that that's what leads to mayhem and uh a, a bad society but we want to be respectful of your time and uh uh and definitely uh we really appreciate you coming on can you give some actionable items for the uh individual listening to this for them to do in their daily lives and then can you plug any kind of programs you have yeah i mean look if if uh, people want to go to chemicalfreebody.com again and use that promo code pat1776 uh, order Super Soldier, the Greens 85, the turmeric, the, the mushrooms. He's got a, uh, an oral, it's a sublingual mushroom mix that is amazing. The turmeric's like 300 times more powerful than normal turmeric mm-hmm. because it's sublingual. He's got gut gut cleanse uh, products. He's, it's, it's really good stuff. So if you don't have your health, there's nothing else you can do. Right. Right. So they have to start with their health. And then they can help others. So that's that's yeah. the biggest thing. But you know, a clean source of water, if you can if you can find it, um, <laughs> start learning, start learning how to grow your own food without you know petroleum based fertilizers and weed killers and and uh, pesticides on your tomato plants and all that sort of stuff. 
Yeah, start growing your own food um, and learn some self-defense. Mm-hmm. Learn how to take care of yourself, get in shape, you know, that's because, you know, when we, we look at the monetary system, we know that it's at the end of the monetary system. Right. And when this, when this change happens, uh, and the dollar is no longer the uh, currency that, that people have to trade with globally, I don't I don't know if the dollar even I don't know what it's gonna be worth, if it's gonna be worth anything. But when that happens and nobody nobody can see into the future crystal clear perfectly except the people who are gonna do it, um imagine imagine if your money is now worth nothing. Like you can't even go to the grocery store and buy anything because your money is worth nothing. The masses are going to loot the grocery stores most likely. There's gonna be civil unrest. And so yeah, you might want to know how to take care of yourself. <clears throat> That's a, so. a phenomenal message. Yeah, great message. How, how far out do you see a monetary collapse happening? You're talking about central banking, digital currencies, and the switch over to that. Yeah, the well, you know, the, the Chinese, the Russians, Brazilians, India, you know, they're all with the Saudis are um, looking to sell their oil in something other than U.S. dollars. Um, as soon as they're brought in, as soon as the Saudis are brought into the BRIC banking system i don't think it takes the dollar long i don't know you know could be overnight um it could be several months it could be half a year i don't know but you know when i talk to you know experts financial experts people that you know aren't being paid to tell people hey keep your money in the stock market all that sort of stuff uh you know it could go really fast and so Hmm. uh yeah, and it's weird because over a decade ago, probably twelve years ago, and I lost the I lost the whole thing on my iPad when my iPad crashed. But I wrote a book called Operation Green Jeff that combines tier, tier one operators like a company like Blackwater, um, and uh, so it combined tier one operators with banking history and time travel to mm-hmm. alter to alter things. So my main my main character woke up in the morning to go on a fishing trip and turns on the TV and uh, the Chinese are dumping the dollar and the stock market's crashing. And then his boss from the from the company, Green Tip is the name of the company, calls him and says, you see what's going on? He says, yeah. He goes, you need to get to the facility. So um, he goes to the facility and uh, all the other guys that work for the company that are former you know, former special forces guys are there and then they have a meeting the next morning and basically a banker comes in, a historian explains the history of banking. And I was thinking of this was going to be a movie and G. Edward Griffin, who wrote The Creature from Jekyll Island, was going to mm. be the historian uh, who yeah. would play that part of the movie um, and explains the history of banking, the Federal Reserve, you know, central banks, all that stuff. And then a scientist comes in and explains that they had figured out time travel. So they go back in different times, and uh, they they off the guy in the late 1700s that wrote the plan for the Rothschilds to take over the banking industry. And when they make it back, <clears throat> the collapse has not happened yet. And then they go back again in time to get uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt to go on the River of Doubt, the Amazon uh, trip that they went on down the Amazon River. Uh, the priest that put that all together. You guys ever read the book River of Doubt? Mm-mm. No. I believe that's the name of it. It's about that Amazon expedition. But the Catholic priest that put it all together, they go back and visit him and basically tell him, you're going to take him on the trip and you're going to do it fast. You're going to put this thing together quick so that so that Roosevelt wouldn't be there to run for president again and Taft would win instead of Wilson because Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So, different trips like that. Um, but they go back to, to Jekyll Island and uh, take a boat across at night. They steal a boat and they're going to go whack everybody in the in that building that's right in the Federal Reserve Act in 1910. And uh, they get ambushed by automatic weapons um, and think about the year, 1910, they get ambushed by guys shooting automatic weapons and they're shooting accurately at night. So they know then when they get back, some of the guys die, but 
But when they get back, they now know that the bankers have figured it out and are sending guys back in time as well. So it's kind of wow. a ghost us back and forth in, in time and stuff. So Okay, okay. And the whole book, I lost the whole book. I was about to say, oh, I, I, that is crazy. You that read a whole book crazy. and lost it? <laughs> yeah, I was so fast. But it, I would have loved to read time, that. Definitely a time traveler that did that. <laughs> <laughs> a time traveler what, what came and deleted that? your book. <laughs> yeah, a time traveler definitely came back and erased that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit. But, um, yeah, I was thinking, you know, that was over a decade ago. I was thinking people are going to think I'm absolutely insane, right? Because it was digital implants. It was all that shit that was taking mm. place, right? Everything. Well, I mean that's happening now, honestly. I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's almost like they took Revelation and just made it their playbook or something, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the whole that's digital one, implants and stuff. That's one thing I have pondered was, are, is, is, is that part of the Bible? Is that a playbook? Or, or is that prophecy? Well, prophecy? Oh, interesting. So you think they may have, over time, uh, actually implanted their own story in the Bible to make it, like, people consciously manifest something like that that's that's a wild thought yeah well that's i i can never have normal thoughts <laughs> i think about about myself as well sometimes. well it's like uh, you know that's, that's the thing is it's like i say it's in terms of human health um when i noticed in the 90s kids with autism coming to my karate classes and the parents were explaining you know what was going on i wasn't just like okay no problem he's got a learning disability i'm like what's causing these kids to suddenly have this issue yeah because i was old enough to remember when nobody had it and back then you know it was one in ten thousand kids now it's one in 36. if this wow. continues it's gonna be almost every kid is going to be literally that jacked up wow. you know so that thing that's why the war is literally taking place on our soil it's taking place on our water it's taking place on our air if everybody was healthy and was connected to their intuition and their spirit, none of this would be possible. None of this would be possible. Like this would have never been possible. Even 10 years ago, you didn't have enough people that were that jacked up. Mm -hmm. Like if they, if they would have started doing this stuff 10 years ago, think about it. Yeah, we're going to allow uh, boys to beat the shit out of girls now yeah. in sports and they can use their locker room. Do you know how <laughs> 10 years ago, men would have said, they would have Yeah, you're, you're done. You're done. You're done. You get, you're gone. Leave now, or we're going to pull you out of here. We're going to drag you out by your clothes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you've got to have a really sick society, um, spiritually, physically, uh, and mentally, to remotely try to pull this shit off. Yeah, it's some crazy stuff. I can't believe the amount of fathers that let that happen. You know what I mean? Especially like with kids, letting other like people into your well, locker, locker room, bathroom, this, that, and the other thing. It's like that's the th yeah, man. I've got see, I've got three daughters, right? So I've got I was abused as a kid. My dad was a pretty abusive guy, and I was sick my whole childhood too. Um, I was trying to you know do my best at sports and stuff like that, but I was I was a really sick kid. Um, so I'm a guy in, instead of being abusive to my children, I went 180, the other direction mm -hmm. and probably a little too overly protective of my daughters because everyone that knows me knows like everybody's terrified of doing anything to my daughters because they know that hell will come down on top yeah. of them. Right. That's how it should I, be. Yeah. We, and so. Um, when I saw all of this stuff going on and, and school boards and uh, politicians and stuff openly just abusing children psychologically going along with all of this, uh, it enraged, it absolutely enraged me. Um, and I called out a lot of people about it. And there's a lot of people that don't like me because of it. Mm. But, you know, to me, it, it was very important that people started understanding the seriousness of what we were dealing with. Um, that... Uh, that they're absolutely coming for the kids. They're coming for the kids. And that um, that people need to stand up. And I, I was, I'm still perplexed that when I was at school board meetings, there were hardly any dads. There was a lot of, a lot of moms mm -hmm. uh, who were trying to stand up for their kids and stuff. That, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's troubling. It's, a lot, it's, it's troubling because there was a lot of uh, 
you know, I think even pastors, you know, who would message me on social media because I was posting pictures of their uh, signs on their churches and stuff, the, bil the billboards and stuff saying, you know, online, um, online services and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, the churches were all closed and stuff like that. I'm like, you've got zero faith in God. Right. Zero, you, you know, you're supposed to be the leader of a congregation. You know, it, it was, yeah. So all of it, all of it, yeah, made me pretty angry, to be honest with you. That was the Rivolo Podcast. Well, anything else you got? No, I think that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. I really appreciate you jumping yeah, on we, here, Pat. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Pat. It was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where, where, uh, <clears throat> what does he do down here? Oh, did, yes, I've heard, I, I've heard of it. I can't, what, what is it though? Yeah, I'm not familiar. Oh. Yes, it's like, yes, I, I, I've, Do you think you could connect us? That would be great, yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll show proof. We'll show proof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. We'll, we'll definitely do that. Appreciate that. Awesome, Pat. Well, thank you so much. I, we appreciate the interview, and uh, much love sent your way, my man. Um, go check out his supplements and all the stuff on his website. We'll go ahead and link that in the description. So, awesome. Pat? Thanks. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> okay, interesting. That was great. That was great as well. Dude, you know, he was in his car, so it was like, oh, could this, you know, and I was like, is he gonna be? I don't think he was, he's a, fine. he was a bit disconnected at the beginning when he was driving and stuff like that, and then he just started ripping. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. 13 bloodlines are running the world. <laughs> also, dude. We should totally go to that pawn shop and see if we get that guy on. <laughs> I, I've heard of that show. It, he's got like a, like a, you know, Pawn Stars? Yeah. With, it's like, it's, yeah, it's no, the I guy know, who I goes, know Pawn Stars of it, yeah. The yeah, bald guy. Bald guy. Yeah. So the best I can do is yeah. you know, the meme. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. I've seen that before. That name, like, brought back some, like, flat, some nom flashbacks. What was his name again? Something Wolf. Yeah, I, I can't remember, but we have it on recording, so. That's nutty. I'm starving. Yeah, me too. Um. Something antiques, right? You said something. Mm hmm. That's oh, downloading. Look up Nashville Antique. Wolf. Liz Wolf. Mike Wolf. Yeah. American Pickers. American Pickers. There you go. Let's see how big they are. I don't think this show's on anymore. 224K. Okay. The pawn Shopper. shop's awesome, though. It's um, it's right by um. Uh, where is it? It's downtown somewhere. Yeah, it was on the History Channel. That's crazy. He's definitely not going to be in the store, but <laughs> I've been to the store a handful of times. I was really hoping he was like, yeah, let me send you his email. Well, I on didn't... the podcast, I that's a good thing to ask. You know what I mean? I don't we know. can cut like, it. Yeah, that's true. We can cut it. There it is. Oh, he's got way more followers than the show. Okay, so he's a pretty big individual. Dude, yeah, I wonder if we could get him on the pod. That'd be cool. I mean, hell, message him. Just say, I think we message him and say, hey, uh, Pat Militich told, told us to reach out. We just had him on the pod, on our podcast. Uh, he said he'd be a great guest. If 
you ever have any time to, you know, something like that. Just name drop Pat. <laughs> we should post the clip and tag him and be like, Send him the clip. <laughs> Pat said he had to come on the podcast. Yeah. Well, I thought that interview went great as well. I agreed. I think we're some pretty good interviewers, actually. I think we're great. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I would recommend is sometimes, sometimes um, we're having like when we're discussing something. You uh oh shit did that fall off? I sure hope not. Oh no, I think. He's good. Um. Is like. Just like, yeah, this is a big trend in society, where, like this happening, this happening, this happening. But then you don't like end it with a question. I don't know if that's a big thing, but like, I do that and on... usually they pick it up well. But it's, sometimes it's it's just like a bit like you're just throwing yeah, the ball yeah. in their court without like giving them. A... I think that's fine though, because normally they have something to. Normally they like, do have something to say off of it. Yeah. But then you again, like, it state doesn't. Opinion, and then they're like, I agree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, I actually think it's better sometimes to leave the door open. Like, what I was always taught in, uh, like, when I was doing news, is to, like, if they, like, pause for a second or something like that in a conversation, to not say anything. Let them go, yeah. No, I then they'll, like, try to fill the silence. Right. And normally when they try to fill the silence, they, like, look deep into their brain and, and pull out something, something super organic. Yeah, right, right, right. So if you ever, like, so I think it's actually good to, like, leave. Don't ask them anything specific. Or, obviously, we should ask them specific questions. But if we leave the door wide open, they will try to fill the silence. And normally it's like something really insightful. Or at least something organic. Yeah. I was, did you hear me trying to get to the Freemason thing? 